Hey, I want to welcome you back to Conference USA Media Day coming your way from Dallas, Texas. I'm Rob Thulin. Good to have you with us. We again turn our, turn our attention to the men's side. Four coaches, and a, uh, one of them is, is new to the conference. First, to my far right, he's the head coach at Old Dominion. Jeff Jones is joining us. Right next to him, the head coach at Rice, Ben Braun. And to my left, Donnie Tyndale, after a very successful season last year of Southern Miss, he's also joining us. And to the far left, we have Ed Conroy of Tulane. Gentlemen, good to have you with us. Jeff, since you're the newbie, we're going to start with you, my friend. Uh, first year, um, you've had great success every place you've been, but you're taking over a team that was 5-25. and 25. How important was it the first practice you had to mentally get them ready for the season? Well, I, I think we, we actually built up to that, uh, and, and it was the workouts throughout the summer, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that, that I think, uh, you know, starts building that, that positive attitude to, to leave last season behind and, and look forward uh, to what we're going to do this year. Um, you know, we want to set the tone, and, and the big thing for us uh, has, has been to really emphasize uh, a collective mentality, that if we're going to be successful, whatever success we are a able to accomplish, uh, it's it's going to be through a collective effort. Uh, I'm, a, I'm kind of a stat nerd, and I, I, I'm not afraid to admit it, but I look at the numbers, and what jumps out at me is 41% field goal shooting. Was that mechanical, or was it mental once you looked at the tape for some of these guys? Well, I, I think it's probably a combination of both. But, but uh, you know, I, I think a, a big uh, factor for our basketball team is being a, better able to put the ball in the basket, whether it's from the, the, uh, from the field mm -hmm. or from the free throw line. We didn't shoot well from the free throw line. Uh, either so you know that's that's really going to have to be a, a big point of emphasis of taking good shots but ma making sure that we're more consistent uh, in, in terms of putting the ball in the basket you know when you look and you go wait a minute you know Old Dominion is two years removed from a conference title right I mean so they have tasted success oh absolutely I, you know that that was one of the things that was so attractive for me uh, about this this job is that Old Dominion's got a great basketball tradition going back to the 1970s when uh, Old Dominion was a Division II uh, power. Um, but Blaine Taylor did a, a phenomenal job of, of uh, uh, building a successful winner at, at Old Dominion. But, you know, sometimes uh, things happened, and, and unfortunately for, uh, for us, it, it happened quickly. But uh, we're, we're looking forward to building things back and uh, uh, you know, really taking a step forward being in, in Conference USA now. Well, let's take a, uh, talk about a couple of players. Keenan Palmore stands out because I look at his assists. Very impressive last year. Where is his game now and where should it be? Well, I, I think the thing with, with Keenan that has, has really jumped out at me is he's, he's a very aggressive kid. He's, he's extremely competitive. Um, you know, he, he should be an outstanding defender. Um, you know, he's a young man. He, he's not a great shooter. Uh, but, uh, you know, he understands and, and needs to understand that, you know, he can make the other guys around him better. Right. Um, but that, that competitiveness, I think, is going to serve him and serve our team well. Uh, you know, we, I've joked around with Keenan uh, a little bit about whether or not uh, it, there's ever been a point guard in Conference USA that's led their team in rebounding because he just has a nose for the basketball. And clearly, thus far, you know, he, he's our best rebounder out on the floor. Dimitri. Uh, you look at his numbers, what stands out? He's the three-point guy for your team. Well, Dimitri is a guy that, that I think, um, you know, has all the talent in the world. Uh, the bottom line for Dimitri is, can he be consistent? Uh, consistent on the floor, consistent uh, off the floor, consistent in his approach uh, each and every day. If he can do that and, and, and harness that ability, uh, then, then I think, you know, he, he can be an exciting player and, and one that, you know, we really need. If, 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 if we're going to be competitive, we need Dimitri to, uh, to step up this season. You, you talked about joining Conference USA, but it's kind of a positive thing because you weren't used to the old conference, but now you're coming into the new conference. But what adjustments do you have to make going into Conference USA? Well, um, the, the big thing, the, the first thing, was getting to know the players and start developing the mm -hmm. relationship. I, I think that was really important. But, you know, once you try to lay that foundation is, is learning about the league. Uh, you got to learn about the travel because clearly in, in this, this <laughs> league, uh, you know, the travel is a factor. Uh, still, I, I think learning uh, in terms of the style of play, uh, you know, my, my colleagues here and, and kind of learning, you know, what, what they like to do and, and trying to be prepared uh, to, to anticipate, you know, some of the things that, that they want to do. Right now, I was joking earlier that, you know, I, I, I know the coaches, I know the schools, and the mascots. <laughs> now I'm, I'm trying to move on from there. But uh, uh, it, it's a big transition, but it's been a lot of fun. You're such a young team, too. I mean, you look at your roster, you don't see the SR 
by very many names. I think it was one, right? Right. Uh, the the one actually is a, a fifth year guy, Anton Larson, who's already graduated. Mm -hmm. uh, Anton hasn't played a lot uh, for for us in the past, uh, but uh, you know we're we're looking for him to make a contribution this year. And Anton will be uh, Anton will be great for our APR, which is something that we all have to <laughs> we, we we all have to be concerned with. But uh, we're a young team, um, and last year was a tough one for 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 everybody associated with Old Dominion. Uh, but I do think that uh, there's a number of those guys, those, those freshmen in particular, that, got, that, that gain get valuable experience uh, even, even through the tough times. So we're, we're hoping that that can you know, pay dividends as we move forward. Well, Jeff, we'll be talking more with you in just a minute. But now we're going to go to Ben Braun, the head coach at Rice. Wow, what a difference a year makes, huh? <laughs> a little bit different team this season. Well, it is. You know, we got guys last year that were playing center for us. Now they get to go back and play guard. So <laughs> uh, I think other coaches were pretty happy about that a year ago. Maybe won't be as happy this year having to face some bigger guys. But, you know, Ron, we were very fortunate. We had a, an outstanding recruiting year. And, you know, you know, as coaches, you don't always know it, but when we signed five players in the fall, you know, little did we know that we'd had four of those players go on to play for a state championship, three won them. And that's pretty unusual. So it means that we did a good job identifying some players who had leadership abilities, uh, strong academic guys that, are, that know how to win. And it's important that, you know, every player wants an opportunity to come in and play, but these guys are going to deserve that opportunity because they're good players. And we took our team on a, on a trip uh, this summer, which helped us. We took advantage of an NCAA rule now that freshmen can now participate on those trips. So we were able to have all of our freshmen get really valuable not just playing time experience, but practice experience as well with our coaching staff. Seven days in British Columbia in Canada, and I don't think people really realize if you have that many young players, you're returning three starters, but still you got to build that chemistry. And when you get them away and they've got to stay with each other for seven days and nights, <coughs> how important that is to a Well, team. it is. It's a t great team building exercise. I think if you were to do a study on teams that go play in the foreign tours or those exhibition tours, you'll find that most of the time those teams really end up benefiting their, their records their accomplishments go up because you're spending time as you say together mm -hmm. learning about one another and you're getting practice and game experience under your belt you lose your top two scores obviously Tamir Jackson Julian DeBose who has to step up their game to offset what you're losing with those two well Max Guercy is a player that really has had uh, had an outstanding freshman year I think it was five-time freshman of the year mm -hmm. uh, won five-time conference USA freshman of the year award and, 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 you know, with a lot of guys that have a good first year, they, they step back, maybe they relax a little bit. Max is exactly the opposite. He's worked awfully hard this summer. Uh, you know, again, another guy that took his team to a state championship in high school. He's used to winning, used to wanting to be a, a leader. And so he's really done a great job of stepping up. And I think he's going to have a phenomenal year this year. So we're excited about Max. It's kind of hard to talk about your leader as being a sophomore, but that's who he is and that's what he is. Uh, at the same time, we've got some uh, young guys that I think are going to step up and you know, that were injured a year ago, and Seth Gerhardt, who's really an outstanding post player that uh, played well against Tulane. I know Coach remembers that, and we, we wish we had him down the stretch of last year, but uh, he went down with an injury, and he's back. So getting him back as a leader, a junior, is going to be very important. And Austin Romiak, who's a senior. So we've got some upperclassmen that will blend with our young guys this year. Mentally, has the team forgotten last year? Well, you know, I, I remember Mike Krzyzewski saying something uh, and I'm not sure who, which team it was he played, but he said, you know, when, they, when he stepped off the court and they lost by the biggest margin that his team's ever lost, he said, I don't want you to forget that. And that's always rung true with me. It might have been Virginia, by the way, <laughs> years ago. <laughs> it was. It was. <laughs> and, and he said, I, I never want you to forget that because I think the players were talking about, you know, let's forget that game. And I think our players, you know, haven't forgotten a year ago, but they, it would, instead we'll use that as experience, motivation, and I think our guys want a, a chance for a fresh start. And they've got that opportunity, certainly with young players coming in, a new conference with some outstanding coaches and, and teams coming in. This is a really a, a, an opportunity f to have a fresh start. So it couldn't come at a better time for our team. Uh, last year you were a very young team. You mentioned all the new players coming this year. But when you have that influx of new players, you don't change your basic scheme. But what can you tweak to maybe accentuate their positives and their, their abilities? Well, we, you know, we're fortunate, again, that we've recruited a class that's going to give us some size. We've got guys now at 6'10", 280, and 6'9", 260. We didn't have that a year ago. We were 6'2", yeah. and 6'3", in there. So now we're going to have a, a different look to our team. But our philosophies, our work ethic is going to be important. And as, I, as I've said all morning in, in, in interviews, and we'll, we've talked about it, our goal, uh, our goals are very simple. We want to be the most improved team over uh, from last year to this year in our league. 
and we want to have the uh, players that improve the most. And that's that, those are realistic goals. Our players, if they can get better, our young guys can get better, our returning guys can get better. You know, I think the wins and the losses take care of themselves. We we will perform better if, if we can keep those goals in mind. You've won a lot of games in your career, over 600, but was last year one of the more challenging years you've had? Well, I've, I've said this, and I don't know if anybody will understand it. It was a challenging year. Nobody as a coach wants to go through <coughs> losing some games, but I can tell you this, from a gratif gratifying point of view, gratification point of view, I don't think I've ever been with a group of guys that gave their all on a, on a nightly basis as a group we had. So uh, I really think the guys we had uh, really picked something up. Uh, it was uh, Our coaching staff worked hard, and I think this is a good time for us to bounce back and, and use what we had last year and, and reap some of the benefits. But, uh, you know, certainly as a competitor, you don't want to go through losses, but our guys were competitive every game, and, and uh, I really, really came to respect their efforts because that's all you ask for as a coach is to give your best effort. Ben, we'll be talking to you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ron. Moving right along. Had a heck of a year last year. I think he got snubbed. Donnie Tindall, head coach at Southern <laughs> Miss. 27 and 10, 12 and 4 in conference play. And a lot of us that did Conference USA last year thought you're in the tournament. When you didn't get in, how disappointing not only was it for you, but for your players? Well, it was very disappointing uh, from the standpoint of every year I've been a head coach the last seven years, it seemed like everything was based on what your RPI was. Right. And our RPI was very high, somewhere between 29 and 33, right up until Selection Sunday. And so we felt like we were a legitimate NCAA tournament type of team. And, and last year, for whatever reason, it kind of seemed like the emphasis was on uh, top 50 victories or top 100 victories and it's hard to get top 50 type programs to come to Hattiesburg, Mississippi and play in the greenhouse. But uh, So we only had one opportunity to do that on our home floor. But with all that being said, uh, the favorite team of Southern Miss fans was Coach Turk's 1987 NIT Tournament Championship team. And for us to get three NIT home games, sellouts for all three, we certainly feel like we built uh, some momentum heading into this season. Talk about how proud you were of the team because you lose to Memphis in the Conference USA Tournament, and that was in two overtimes, but yet you bounced back in the NIT. What did that show you about the makeup of your team? Well, we had a very resilient group, you know, and, and on the front end, we only had four returning players from their NCAA tournament team the year before. So I called our, our team all year, and I didn't mean this in a degrading way, but we were kind of a group of misfits, you know, myself yeah. included, a, <laughs> a transfer here, a junior college guy we plugged in here, a guy that never played Division One basketball, but yet was a fifth year senior in Dwayne Davis. So we were a resilient group that had fought through a lot of different adversities throughout the season. Mike Craig, who was averaging nine mm -hmm. and five at the time, broke his ankle with 13 games to go. And people kind of said, well, there go their, their chances at Southern Miss. And yet Rashard McGill, a senior, steps up and does some outstanding things. So I wasn't uh, surprised one bit that our team rebounded uh, from a very disappointing Sunday. Now, I will say I'm glad we didn't play that <laughs> night because there were some heartbroken young men in that room. But uh, we bounced back and made a nice run and gave our fans something to certainly be proud of. Well, you lose Dwayne Davis, you mentioned. You also lose one of my favorite players, a guy that I think gave 100% every game is in Jonathan Mills, your leading rebounder. What does this put – and what kind of pressure does this put on Neil Watson? Because I've watched the young man since he was a freshman, and sometimes he's like this, and sometimes you, know, you want to snap your fingers and say, Neil, are you here? Yeah. Uh, what kind of pressures I put on him this year because he is going to be the focal point of this team now. Well, no question about that. And I think the nice thing is he has three other seniors to kind of help him shoulder that load, if you will. Mike Craig is now healthy. He's 100%. Gerald Brooks has had an outstanding spring and summer and is probably our best player as it sits today. And then Davion Boardingham really made great strides the second half of last mm -hmm. season and I think will be one of the better bigs in our conference this year. So there certainly will be more of a load on Neal. I think the biggest thing with Neal is he did a great job last year with his turnover to assist ratio, improving and making his teammates better, getting those guys open and easy shots. And I think he's looking to do the same thing this season. You've got some transfers too coming in. 
We do. Can they have an impact right away? Yeah, Aaron Brown is a 6'5 wing player who transferred in from Temple who will have two years of eligibility remaining. He's a strong physical wing that can shoot the ball. He's very tough. I think he'll be good in our press. He's a physical guy that can go rebound it as well. And then Chip Armland's a 6'4 wing player, could probably play more two than three this mm -hmm. season. That'll come off the bench, it looks like, behind uh, Gerald Brooks but played at Minnesota in the Big Ten for two years, played pretty significant minutes, and he's a nice athlete that can be pretty good at both ends of the floor for us. Now you really sold it on defense last year. Opponents 41%, you forced about 17 turnovers a game. Are the new guys buying into that defensive philosophy, or is that a process during the season? No, they're not, and that definitely <laughs> is a process. Uh, okay. You bring in these guys out of high school and junior college, and, uh, you know, they, they've uh, – run and gunned and uh, shot it up real quick and uh, they don't worry a whole bu uh, bunch about defending and rebounding but trust me they hear about it every day and it is a gradual process because the guys I had last year they didn't want to hear it early on either but that's part of it we all understand that and uh, by the time we get ready to tip it up here in a month or so uh, they'll understand or, or they won't be out there playing a whole bunch. Well the fact though you have guys like Neil and some of the players that got to taste success last year and saw you know, the light kind of came out. Okay, if we do this, we have a chance of being successful. Do they pass it down to these young players and say, grab them by the jersey, listen, you got to play defense if you're going to play here? Absolutely, and I think that's the biggest difference with myself and our program right now compared to a year ago is the fact that I can say it, and they, they don't really want to hear it all the time. But when Neil or Gerald or Davion say it, they're going to be more apt to listen and, and say, okay, I get it, and be more willing to give and, and buy in. And that's what's taking place. Those seniors are doing a nice job of communicating and kind of a trickle-down effect from myself to our, our seniors, from the seniors to the rest of these young guys, and, and they're getting it as we move along. Come all the new faces in Conference USA, from your standpoint, of course, you were only in Conference USA, uh, you know, yeah, last year was your first year at Southern Miss. But the new play, what's that do for you? Because you got to start scouting the Jeff Joneses of the world and some of the other new uh, teams. Well, I know this. This league has some outstanding coaches from top to bottom. I have a great deal of respect for all these guys in our entire league. But then you look at, around at the new coaches and the new programs coming in. I've worked for Coach Davis at Middle mm -hmm. Tennessee. He's fantastic. Michael White has done an outstanding job. Alan Major at Charlotte. Brooks Thompson, I could go down the list. All these programs coming in are very good programs that are going to be well coached and certainly we'll all kind of be learning each other and figuring it out on the fly. But uh, I think top to bottom, our league's going to be very, very strong. It's going to be fun. Yeah, it we'll, is. We'll talk to you in a second. Ed Conroy now joins us, the head basketball coach at Tulane. 20 and 15 last year. Congratulations on a great year last season. Well, thank you. It, now, that's the good news. The bad news is you have one <laughs> returning starter. <That's> right. <laughs> so quick to add that. So the rest is going gray by when? November, probably? Uh, absolutely. We've got, we've got some young guys, but, uh, but we also have some guys that uh, maybe have been in the shadows a little bit behind. We, we lost four 1,000-point scores uh, off that team, and, uh, but there's some guys that uh, I think they're relishing their chance to to maybe jump out a little bit now and lead this team that have been, you know, on the bench or playing limited minutes the last few years. So, eight, we're, so we're excited. Eight freshmen, though. That's enough to drive any coach a little crazy, isn't it? <laughs> it is, and 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 you know they they've they've done a nice job of trying to, as as Donnie said, they, rebounding and defense aren't on their on, on their <laughs> radar yet, but it will be. Um, and uh, but they're 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 doing a good job of, of of working hard. I think there's some talented guys in there. Some guys like Ben said that uh, that came from winning programs, and I do think that's really important and and a great point by Ben. You know, uh, so I think there are guys that uh, they're going to be able to contribute this year for us. And I think one of the reasons they'll be able to is the leadership that's been shown over the summer. Uh, and the new rules helping with the earlier practices from the from the returning guys. We're going to ask about those new rules in a little bit with with the, the entire group. But the first 21 season since 1999 and 2000, did the light come on to the guys? I mean, the guys that are coming back and said, "Okay, now we've established something. Can we build on?" Do you have that that leadership that helps the younger guys understand what you did last year? You know, I, I think so. I, I think uh, you know they they witnessed. You know what we what we had to go through to build it from 13 to 15 to 20. They saw what um, you know the sacrifices of the team, uh, all those things that go into to getting to that point. And that's why I think some of these guys that maybe not have played the the minutes, the the Lou Dabney's, the Trey Drives, the Jay Hooks, that are, they're really um, they they're they're hungry to to continue that and, and keep that momentum going forward. Talk about Trey Dry. 
Obviously, he's one of the starters coming back, started all 16 conference games. Tell us about him this year. Well, I smiled when Coach said about guys playing out of position because I, I feel like I've done a disservice to Trey since he's been on yeah. campus. You know, he's such a, such a warrior force, a, a tremendous rebounder, uh, a guy that's uh, really helped others look better in, in his two years that we've had him. And, and we've played him all over, but mainly we've played him at center, very undersized at, you know, at 6'5 and a half, 6'6. Six, six, but, uh, but one of those, he's kind of like a, a blocking back. He kind of clears the way with, with blockouts and things like that so others can, can get the rebound in the spotlight. And I think it's his time, you know, kind of to shine. We'll be able to move him away from the basket a little bit. Uh, and I think he can be a real matchup problem this year for people, you know, guarding him in other positions. Has anybody surprised you so far or your fans? You say, watch this guy. He's a little bit better than what we thought. Is there anybody that stands out? Well, you know, I, I think maybe maybe not surprise me as a coach because I, I see him in high school. I see the potential mm -hmm. in him, uh, and then I see him every day in practice. But you know, I don't I don't know if anybody fully appreciates what Lou Dabney battled last year as far as injuries. He was coming off a knee injury, hurt the other knee during the year. Um, one of the toughest kids I've been around uh, physically and you know and mentally, and I think he's ready for really a breakout type of year because he is healthy. Uh, Jay Hook is, is another one that. Uh, um, I think he benefited. He's played behind, you know, some pretty good guards in, in Ricky Tarrant and Jordan Callahan and Kendall Timmons, and I think he's he's ready to step forward now uh, in, into that role. You only have about a minute, so I'm going to ask each of your questions. Jeff, I'm going to start right side here. If you could change one thing in college basketball for the better of the game, it's on or off the court, what would it be? Well, I, I think uh, a hot topic right now are, are transfers, and, and I think, in, in my opinion, uh, you know, we, we want to be uh, cognizant of, of all the different situations, but if, if a young man's going to transfer, I think they should sit out regardless of, of what the circumstances are. All these waivers and, and exceptions, um, uh, quite honestly, uh, you know, they, they make sense, but I think I would, I would change that rule. Ben? Well, Jeff, you took my answer. Sorry about that. <laughs> believe it or not, and, I, I, most and, coaches and, have said the exact same thing. I was going to say that, so I, I think it was well, Jeff was well spoken in that. And I think it echoes the, the feelings of many coaches. But I would say that working with our student athletes, you know, the NCAA now has changed rules and, and the format for, by which we can now work with our, our players. And, you know, if we're able to work with our players and we're able to spend the most time with them, they're going to benefit. I think we're going to be good mentors to them. We're going to help them and guide them in their academic and their athletic futures. So uh, it's important that, that we are given the opportunity and the trust to work with our players because that's really what they want. That's what their families want. And I think it benefits their success. Donnie. I agree with uh, Jeff uh, wholeheartedly. I think that the transfer situation has got out of hand when you talk about 40% of all the Division One basketball players are going to leave by the end of their sophomore year and transfer. That's outrageous. And I think if you made everybody sit out a year regardless, it would do away with some of that. And even a fifth-year guy, it kind of makes a coach apprehensive to redshirt a guy because, you know, once he graduates that fourth year, you can possibly lose him as a fifth-year senior. So it's changed the landscape of how you kind of handle things within your program. Ed. I would certainly echo these guys on the, uh, you know, on on both the access to our players, but but also the transfer. Uh, you know, I think this league, you know, when when someone does leave, it open up and opens up an opportunity for another. And I think the coaches in this league have done a great job of recruiting talent. And so there's it's going to be a strong league this year. But but there's some really really talented guys that have left this league over the last few years. And if 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 it was in years past and they were back, uh, you know, I, I think you'd be seeing some a really, really high level of basketball. And I think that's a little bit of a shame. It's amazing, all the coaches we've talked to today, everyone said the same thing about transfer. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get something done. <laughs> that wraps that up. We'll be back when we come back. We'll be talking with the Conference USA women's coaches right after this. Stay with us.